Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about laser loss and gain coefficients. I'm going to prove the formula for this. This is very important, and this is essentially the fundamentals of lasers. So this video leads on to my video, uh, which I think I'm going to call the Einstein relations and coefficients. In that, excuse me, I proved these. Uh, perhaps my video on introduction to lasers or how lasers work, in actual fact, is what I'm going to call it. And I think I called another one the, the gain coefficient. But I'm going, to prove the, I'm going to prove the gain coefficient and the loss coefficient here. And I'm going to move quite quickly because, um, yeah, it's, it's, this is reasonably straightforward stuff. So what if you have a, um, we'll say a box. Okay, let me, draw it. let me draw this there. We have a box like this and through it where we have radiation incident. So we know that the irradiance or the power incident, I'm going to call that I0. Or I'm just going to call it I in fact. All right, and we'll say that we have we have um, we have a distance. It's going to move over a distance. Okay, we might call that x, and it's going to have some sort of um, it's going to have some sort of a uh, an attenuation coefficient. Okay, or it's going to have some sort of an absorption coefficient, which I'm going to call alpha. All right. Now, look, you can see very that this obviously depends on the rate of change of the irradiance with respect to time or with respect to position. So we can say that d i dx is equal to alpha times i. Okay, that's something we've seen in the past, and I'll very quickly show you how to integrate this. So you're going to have d i over i. You're going to integrate that is equal to alpha dx. Integrate that. This is between zero and x. This is between i naught and i. And look, this is an integral that's very straightforward. You're going to get the logarithm of i evaluated between i naught and i is equal to alpha x evaluated between 0 and x. This is going to get the natural log of i minus the natural log of i0. So two logarithms subtracted is the same as uh, the two logarithms divided. So you're just going to get i divided by i naught. Uh, there should be a negative sign up here, by the way, because this is loss or attenuation. And it's going to get negative alpha x. We know, of course, that exponentials and logarithms are kind of inverses. So that means this is just going to cancel. I'm going to get i over i naught is equal to e to the minus alpha x. And finally, that i is equal to i naught e to the minus alpha x. Now look, you've probably seen this particular integral done a million times. But that's it there, just uh, explicitly. Okay? So... That's just just keep that in your mind. Keep that in your head for a moment, and I'll wait for my thing there to focus. So, like I said, you should look at my video on proving the Einstein coefficients because I spoke about probabilities of emission and so on. So I'm just going to redraw my little diagram here and say I have an incident irradi irradiance of I, incident on my let's say I'm going to call it a cylinder. Draw it as a cylinder this time. The cylinder has a, uh, an area of A. It's got a length of dz. And we have the irradiance here is the irradiance of z plus dz. All right. So, um, what is the probability of stimulated emission? So we've said in the past that the probability of stimulated emission is w, and that uh, you need in order to get that you need to know the energy density, and you need to know the probability of emission from energy level two to energy level one, which is the Einstein co coefficient b two one. And then you need to ask yourself, how many atoms are available to be stimulated? Well, that's going to be equal to the, the, no, the number density in energy level 2 times the line shape function times d nu. Now, look, if you don't understand that, well, then I, I wouldn't worry about it and just accept it. Okay, that's, that's, that gives you the number of atoms available to be stimulated. And I'm going to, uh, if in actual fact, I'll probably do another video on the line shape function. So that means that the number of atoms stimulated per unit volume, per unit time, so the number stimulated, um, I'm going to say meters cubed and um, per second, okay, just that way. It's probably easier. Is going to be equal to B21 times rho times N2 uh, times the line shape function G nu D nu. All right, so let's look at... The, uh, the the number going up and the number going down. All right, so the number up minus the number down. So this is the total number of photons, I suppose, that will be in the cavity floating around at any one time on their own. 
and that's going to be equal to the following. It's going to be equal to the number in the cavity going downwards, which is B21 rho N2 G nu D nu. Okay. Now the thing is, we need to add onto that. Um, we need to add onto that the number that are in the actual volume itself. So we need to multiply by a volume. And I'm after realizing that I don't have enough room. So I'm going to rewrite this. So we're going to have the following. We're going to have going downwards is B21 uh, rho N2 G nu D nu. All right. Then we need to see how many are in a particular volume. And what the volume is going to be the area times the, um, the, the, the length. Okay, so length by breadth. So we're going to have A, D, Z here. So that's the number going downwards. And we need to take away from that the number going upwards, which is B12 rho N1 G nu um, D nu A, D, Z. All right, that's something I've spoken about before in the past, proving my Einstein coefficients. All right, so the next thing you need to realize is that we spoke about the fact that di dx is equal to minus alpha times i. Okay, we said that at the very start. That was before we proved, I suppose, our formula. i being, of course, the irradiance. Now, I need to think a small bit about electromagnetism lectures. And you will, um, I, I actually, look if you look at my video on the pointing vector, actually, I've done this proof. But the pointing vector, the pointing vector gives the energy per unit time, so seconds to the minus one per meter squared. And that, uh, that, that's just fine. And it, it's found that the average of the, array of the pointing vector, which we call S, is equal to the irradiance. And that's equal to um, U times, well, the energy density, which is rho times the speed of light. So the average of the pointing vector is equal to the irradiance, is equal to rho C. Look at my video on the pointing vector if that doesn't make sense. So that means we can we can exchange I here with rho C. All right. And just in case we're moving in some sort of a medium, I'm going to actually divide by a an index of refraction as well. All right. Next, what's di dx? Well, di dx is this function here, the amount um, going upwards minus the amount going downwards, multiplied by the energy of those. Okay, so this is, we'll say, a number. And if you multiply the number by the energy in a particular photon, well, then you have all your energy. So this is going to get a bit complicated. So I'm just going to factorize it very quickly. You can factorize this, here if you want, into something like this. It would be B12 times N1 minus B21 N2 outside of rho G nu D nu A D Z. Okay, that's that's the number, that's the same thing here, just factorized. And if that's a number of, like I said, the number of photons, so multiply by the average energy of the photon, and we get the total energy, which is di dx. And as I said a moment ago, this is equal to minus alpha rho c over nu or over mu, which is our index of refraction. But you need to remember that A21 the Einstein coefficient for spontaneous transition from level 2 to level 1 is equal to 1 over the, uh, the, the lifetime. That's something. And the lifetime is measurable. I mean, A21 is measurable. But the, the Einstein coefficient B12 or B21 is not measurable. So what we need to do is basically get rid of B21 and B12. All right, and how we do that is by using uh, using something approved in the Einstein coefficients, which is that B12 times G1 is equal to B21 times G2. So that means we're able to sub in for our Einstein relations there. So we're able to get rid of, we'll say, um, either B12 or B21. And secondly, in our Einstein coefficients, we, we realize that A21 over B21 is equal to 8 pi H times nu cubed over c cubed. So, if we substitute for b12 and we get it in terms of b21, now we can substitute for a21 and we'll get everything in terms of a measurable uh, quantity called a21, which is the Einstein coefficient of spontaneous transition from level 2 to level 1, which is equal to 1 over the lifetime of level 2. Now, I'm not going to do that because it's, it's, just, um, it's just a bit of a pain. I'll let you do the algebra. It's no big deal. 
So you do that in your e range, you're going to get alpha is equal to 821 times c squared over 8 pi times h nu squared mu squared. And we're going to have g2 over g1 n1 minus n2 times the line shape function g nu. And this is our, this is it's not our Einstein coefficient, this is our loss coefficient. Alright, so yeah, I spoke about our gain coefficient in, a, in, a, in another video, so you can look that up if you want. But essentially what this means is, we had a formula that looked something like this. We had i is equal to i0 e to the minus alpha x. So this means this is going to give us a decaying exponential. So the number of, or the incident radiance, or the, well, see, the accident radiance is going to be a decaying exponential. So in order to get a laser to work, you need to get this to become a, a negative number. Because a negative times a negative gives a positive number, which gives you exponential growth. And very quickly, I don't really want to step on the toes of another video. But if you look here, this is the population density in level 2 taken away from, let's say, the degeneracies times the population density of level 1. And if somehow N2 is greater than N1 times G2 over G1, that means this will be a negative number, this will become negative, and you'll get exponential growth, and as a result you're going to get gain in your laser cavity, which is how you get a laser to start working. Alright, so I think that's all i got to say about that. Um, yes, that is. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, and subscribe to my channel.